In this video, we're going to compare OpenAI's ChatGPT and GitHub's Copilot. To do this, we're going to have three challenges set out for each AI to complete. The winner of each challenge will be the AI that stuck most closely to the required task. With three applications we're asking it to build, the first one will be the FizzBuzz challenge. The second one, we're going to ask it to create a CRUD API that connects to a Mongo database to get posts. And the third challenge will be to create a clone of the YouTube front end. To make this challenge as fair as possible, we're going to use the same command for each AI. So for the first one, we're going to say solve the FizzBuzz challenge in JavaScript. So this is ChatGPT. So it's going to give us a little example here of what the challenge incorporates. And hopefully after this, it will kick out a nice little bit of script. So here we go. Here's the script it's going to kick out. So it's going to be a for loop and it's going to have a few if statements in. And then at the bottom here, which is great, it actually tells us what the code's doing. So now let's have a look at what Copilot provides us with. So exactly the same command. So it's going to say it's going to create a function to resolve the FizzBuzz challenge. And then it kicks out a function. And then it's going to call the function. So the big difference here is that ChatGPT has given us what the problem actually is, how to resolve the problem, and then actually explains the code so we can understand what it's doing. Whereas Copilot has just solved the issue for us. So towards the end of the video, I'm actually going to go with the pros and cons of each of ChatGPT and Copilot. And I think this is one of the big ones, but we'll get to that at the end of the video. Okay, for the second challenge, we're going to ask the AIs to create a CRUD API to get posts from a MongoDB. Now, the reason I've worded it this way is whether the AI will pick up the CRUD part or the get posts part. So let's see what happens. So chat GPT comes back and picked up the CRUD part of the request. It's telling us we need to install Mongo and Express. Now we need to create a new server.js file. And it's given us the code we can pop in there. So it's talking us step by step exactly what we need to do to create this. So now it's defining our endpoints that we're going to create. So we've got our get endpoint. Uh, we should get a get single endpoint. I know we've got a create endpoint. And we should see a delete and a patch endpoint on this as well, hopefully. So we actually got a network error here. So this sort of looks at the fragility of using online services like this. If the request takes too long, it will give you a network error. Um, so let's move over to um, Copilot and see what that gives us out for exactly the same explanation. So it's going to import Express, import Mongoose, import Body Parser and Cause. Um, now it's going to create a roots file. Um, and the middleware, so we're going to use cores in the middleware and body parser. And now it's going to import the roots as middleware, connect to the database. And it's going to start the server. Now it's going to ask us to create a roots file, a roots folder with post.js inside of it. Um, and inside this file, it's given us everything we need to import, express, router, also a model for the post. Uh, we have a get endpoint. We have a get single endpoint. A create endpoint, so a post endpoint. A delete endpoint. This is just going to go through all the endpoints at the moment and the last one which should be an update endpoint.
now it's asking us to create the model page, uh, the model file. So in here we're going to import mongoose. We're going to have a title of type string required true, and then description string required true. We're going to export that model, and then we're going to create a package.json file. So this is another part of um, Copilot that you'll sometimes find is that it will just give you part of the code and not the full amount of code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on with this and just see what it gives us. So it's actually, it's just ended the code there. This is what it's given us. Um, so there's a bit of a pros and cons there from either side. So we have partial code here from Copilot, which we can work with. Um, whereas chat GPT just kick back an error and completely clear the screen. If they didn't clear the screen, we'd have at least some code to work with there and we could request a little bit more code from the API. Um, so unfortunately, both sides have failed on this one, um, which is a shame. For the third and final challenge, we're gonna ask each AI to create a clone of YouTube's front end homepage in HTML and CSS. So I wanna see what that kicks back. Um, so ChatGPT is saying, yes, it can do this for us. It's kicking out an HTML file. It's giving us a style sheet. I'm wondering if it's gonna, it's gonna write the style sheet separately for us. So we have a header with a YouTube logo, a search form uh, with a submit button on the form. Uh, we have a navigation menu. sign in button uh, and now we get to the recommendations part of the video so this is actually looking really nice at the moment I can imagine this file getting quite big this is most probably going to kick back an error there we go we get a network error again because the request was taking too long so what we'd need to do for that one, for example, is break it down into smaller chunks. Um, so instead of requesting create a YouTube, the whole of YouTube's front end, maybe we just request um, the menu and then we request the most recommended video section um, and then we request what videos you'd like. Um, so I think for this, we'd need to break it down into smaller chunks. I don't know what the timeout there was, potentially 60 seconds. Um, so let's let's now ask Copilot the exact same question and see what it kicks out. So it looks like it's going to create a React application for us. So it's creating the app component in React. And now it's going to render that component out on the screen. So this is standard initial React file. Okay, so that looks like it's created the, in, the index.html file. Um, you'll notice that I was inside the body tag there. I've actually had to come outside the body tag after the HTML file in order to carry on with the code. So now it's gonna tell us what we need inside the index.js file. So strangely enough, this looks like it's repeating. Okay, so we're, we're in a loop now. So this is another thing that happens with Copilot is sometimes it just goes into an infinite loop um, and doesn't actually resolve the entire issue. So all it's done here is create for us a, a React application that's gonna give us a title of YouTube clone, and that's it. So it's not actually able to create a YouTube clone so unfortunately, that's a big fail there on the co-pilot side. Um, if chat 
GPT hadn't have network errored, we would have had a nice application there um, that we could have built upon because uh, I did only ask it to create the HTML and CSS, whereas Copilot is actually tried to create an entire React application. Um, so I think that's another thing that's going to come into the pros and cons at the end. Now I think we're going to go through a few pros and cons of using each of the services. So for example, ChatGTP, sort of pros here would be it explains the codes. Um, if you're not a coder, it gives you an understanding of what the code's actually doing. Uh, so you're not just copying and pasting code in, because we can all just copy and paste code in. Um, we've all been doing it from Stack Overflow for years. Um, but for people who don't fully understand what the code's doing, it gives a great explanation of exactly what it's doing and what we can expect the output to be. Um, and it's really easy to understand. Um, some of the cons here, you have to get the, the terminology correct when you're creating the question that you want to ask ChatGPT. Um, and as you can see on the screen here, sometimes you'll get network errors, um, you'll get timeouts. Um, if you do too many requests, you've got to wait a little bit of time just for that to refresh. Um, you do have this option up here to reset the thread. Um, but you do get timed out sometimes if you're asking too many things at once. Um, as for Copilot uh, Pros, it works directly with your IDE. So here, for example, we've got Visual Studio Editor and it's plugged directly into here and it works with our codes. Um, it has a huge database of codes, uh, but some of the drawbacks on that is it just gives you code back. Uh, we do get a few little explanations here, but as you saw in the FizzBuzz challenge, it was just the FizzBuzz challenge. It just gave you the answer. It didn't explain what it was doing. Um, so you're not, you're not really learning. Uh, it's more, I would say it's more for the advanced user, whereas ChatGPT would be more for the, it could be for the advanced user, but if you're beginning and wanting to learn, it gives you great examples, whereas Copilot, you've got to understand kind of what it's doing. Um, and as we can see here, it, we, we've got loops. It's just, it started off creating the code for us and then it just didn't know where it was going next. It just started looping. So I would say for the more advanced user, use Copilot. And for the, if you're starting off programming and you're not too sure what you're doing with the code, ChatGPT is a great startup for you. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.